Has the FBI gone rogue? By John Grimaldi Has the FBI gone rogue? That's the question John Solomon posed in his interview recently with Rebecca Weber, CEO of the Association of Mature American Citizens, on AMAC's Better for America podcast. Solomon is an award-winning investigative journalist who, fed up with the emergence in recent years of biased news coverage, came to the conclusion that it was time for a return to the old-fashioned notion of journalism, getting news first, but first getting it right. The reportage on his website, www.justthenews.com, offers honest journalism, trusted reporters. Weber asked him for his take on today's FBI, which seems to have become politicized over the past year and a half, most notably when it raided former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home and more recently when FBI agents, with guns drawn, raided the Kintnersville, PA home of pro-life activist Mark Huck and arrested him in front of his wife and seven children. Current and former FBI agents were troubled, according to Solomon. There is a whistleblower by the name of Steve Friend. He's an FBI agent, highly decorated, highly respected, great performance ratings his whole career. He began speaking out this summer saying, he's very concerned about the FBI's use of SWAT teams and tactical teams to go make misdemeanor arrests, go make minor arrests. It's dangerous, it's unsafe, it escalates the violence. And I'm beginning to see that the Justice Department just wants to intimidate people it's about to arrest that are conservative and it needs to stop, and he's been suspended now for raising those concerns. Some of the most famous former FBI agents, including the guy who arrested the Unabomber, one of the most deadly terrorists in American history, has said the same thing. It is insane to be using tactical teams to make misdemeanor or minor political arrests. And when you listen to the people who are on the front lines, who were FBI agents or are FBI agents, they say three things. 1. This is a complete aberration from the practice of the FBI for the last 30 years. 2. It appears to be a violation of the FBI's manual. And 3. It appears to have a political nature. All three of those things concern current FBI agents, former FBI agents and, of course, the American public. And the only assumption most Americans are making is this is somehow political, that the DOJ under Joe Biden has been weaponized to go after political enemies, to criminalize political differences. He said he thinks this kind of behavior is going to have an impact on the midterm elections. Solomon pointed out that in addition to Agent Friend, there are at least 19 other FBI whistleblowers that have come forward in the last few months. They've approached Congressman Jim Jordan, Senator Chuck Grassley, Senator Ron Johnson, Congressman James Comer, all key Republicans. If the Congress flips this fall, they will be in chairmanships and have a key role doing investigative oversight of the FBI and other federal agencies. These 20 whistleblowers all have the same story. There is a politicization of the FBI when it comes to criminal investigations, and they give real specific examples. FBI agents have said the FBI in Washington opened up a criminal case on Donald Trump during the 2020 election without the proper predicate. It took information from a leftist group, pretended it was real evidence, and they opened it up just like they did in the Russian collusion case in 2016. So Donald Trump gets opened up on, without predicate evidence, an investigation of Hunter Biden with pretty good evidence gets shut down. That's the sort of political bias that these agents are reporting to Congress. Solomon's concluding remarks focused on the upcoming midterm elections. There are indications in the polls that Americans prefer Republicans over Democrats. That's an unusual thing. In the generic poll, normally Democrats have an advantage even in a bad year. That's one sign. He noted also that Hispanic voters are moving much more to the red column, pointing out that in June Hispanic Republican Myra Flores won a House seat in Texas, a seat that hadn't been in Republican control for 150 years. It suggests, he said, that the border issue is having an effect. Hispanic voters, white voters, black voters are very concerned about the border. And then I think crime is becoming a third factor. Americans say that crime is one of the primary reasons they're going to go to the polls. Democrats own the defund the police narrative. They own the no cash bail narrative. And so that could be a boomerang. And then finally, the economy, inflation, gas prices are eating into everybody's wallet. Everybody feels like their budget went back a few steps last year. And as a result, 70% to 81% of Americans say this country is on the wrong path. Concern about inflation, concern about crime, concern about the border, and the growing shift of Hispanics to Republicans. 
It certainly lines up for a midterm election where Republicans could capture both chambers, but it's still a very divided country. These are all close margins. There's still the uncertainty of absentee voting in some of these key states like Pennsylvania, where just the other day a government official said it could be a few weeks before we have some races settled. So, we have to watch the integrity issues as this election unfolds. But right now, the momentum seems to be with Republicans. And I would not be surprised if Republicans picked up a couple of seats in the Senate and maybe 15 to 29 seats in the House. Please consider joining the The Association of Mature American Citizens. Please take a moment and subscribe to this channel.